This helium balloon will carry a payload of experiments almost to the edge of space, where the sky is black and the air we breathe is just a thin blue layer that covers the Earth. Let's go ahead and do balloon fill. Opening up. I think we're up to 112. John Powell has flown balloons and science experiments to the upper atmosphere dozens of times. But now he wants to go one giant leap farther. But we don't think there is a limit. You could fly all the way to space with the, with the airships. The title of Powell's new book, Floating to Space, sounds more like science fiction. A really huge airship and slowly accelerated over weeks to get all the way up into orbit. The problem is an airship big enough to do that wouldn't survive on the ground because it would be too fragile to survive in the lower winds. Powell's plan is to use three separate airships. The smallest and strongest would fly from the ground to 140,000 feet and dock with a floating dark sky station. From there, a large hydrogen-filled airship would carry astronauts and cargo the rest of the way into space. Well, the trick is to burn the fuel slowly. So instead of burning it all in four minutes like a conventional rocket, you're burning it over five to seven days. Powell believes it will be a cheaper, safer way to go to space. Um, that's it for the battery checks. Okay. JP Aerospace is a small business run with the help of volunteers. Oh, I always say we're a volunteer space program. Uh, we wouldn't do it any other way. You really get the, the passion of the people and the ideas and, and the people really to, to work on a commitment. Okay, not, not quite yet, Paul. Okay. We're getting close. They're already building and testing equipment that they'll need to float to space, including this airship hovering in a large hangar at McClellan Air Park. At the only cafe for nearly 100 miles in northern Nevada, they grab a bite to eat. Thank you. Log on to the internet and see where their balloon package has parachuted back to Earth. It transmitted map coordinates to a satellite in space and onto a website. The package has landed miles from the nearest road, behind those mountains. There are some alternate routes in, if you don't mind walking, probably about four or five miles. They use satellite images to look for the best way to hike in. The pictures show incredible detail because a satellite recently photographed this area in a search for missing adventurer Steve Fawcett. Toward me. And now it's helping this team from Northern California find a new way to go to space. Woo